A retired army colonel and former military governor of Gadun State, Abubakar Umar, has warned President Muhammad Buhari that Nigeria risks sliding into crisis if the president continues to give undue preference to some sections of the country over others in national appointments. Mr. Umar said this in an open letter titled, Mr. President, please belong to all of us, in which he pointed out that the lopsided Ness in the president's appointment is more glaring in the leadership of the nation's security services. He also referred the president to the case of the former chief justice of Nigeria, CJN Walter Onore, who, according to him, was disgraced out of office on corruption charges. Joining us now, is, still in the studio, is a political and public affairs analyst as well as an author, Achike Chude. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And we are joining us via Zoom, Tokwe Fasua. Thank you very much, Oswell, for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be here. Good to have you as well. Uh, let, let's start with the Umar's warning that Nigeria is sliding into a crisis if uh, the president continues to give what he refers to as undue preference to some sections um, of the country uh, when it comes to national appointment. What's, do you agree with that comment? Oh, that's me, right? Yes, yes, that's to you, sir. Well, it, it, it's likely, but um, there's something I need to quickly get out of the way, very quickly, uh, that, you know, we need to be very careful that um, we don't play the game of elites who are, you know, one way or the other looking for, a, 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 you know, appointments and relevance. Uh, when an elite, uh, someone from the elite class comes forward to say there's a, uh, a skew in one direction or the other, we should be extremely careful. Even though Dan Giwa Umar um, is, well, I mean, has a reputation for integrity, and for speaking truth to power still, uh, I, I, I classify him as a member of the elite core. And, um, you know, so we need to be very clear on that because when you um, take a position that, um, you know, a certain section of the country, especially along ethnic and tribal lines, uh, are not well appointed into office or, the, you know, there's a skew against them, um, we need to then find out whether those who have been there in the past have been there on, on behalf of their people. Usually they've been there on behalf of themselves and their families and they made good, whether it was money or whatever it is they yeah, very few of them have actually gone into office to really serve and we can count those numbers on our fingers actually. So uh, we need to get that very clear. Uh, I, I would rather, um, if you want to talk about inclusivity at this moment, uh, I think we should rather be talking in terms of okay, how many women, uh, how many women uh, are appointed into offices, um, how many, how many people who are fairly young, uh, or how many youths, in fact, below the ages of the age of thirty-five, I, I, I've, I've been appointed into anything. That is what I think we should uh, do at this point in time. All right, uh, let's bring if we look at in said, to we, quickly we, react we, to um, uh, what you just uh, said as a uh, reaction to caution. Yeah, yeah it to was. I think it was refreshing to hear once more from uh, Kangiwa Abubakar Omar. Um, he has spoken at critical moments in the country, but has been quite silent for quite some time, in spite of all that has been going on. So I think it is uh, a statement that was, um, uh, I think it, that would go down well with a lot of people who are worried about uh, the direction of the Nigerian ship. Um, I think coincidentally it came out around the same time that the Guardian editorial also did something about uh, the sectionalization and the nepotism that is going on in the country. There are no two ways about it. There's no way other way you can look at it. Uh, the reality is uh, that Nigeria is a very diverse country. Uh, you know, so many interests to satisfy. And the, the framers of the Constitution rightly came out with uh, the Federal Character uh, Commission uh, so that um, appointments and uh, the inclusion of Nigerians in their governance will be done in a way that respects the diversity of the country uh, for the purpose of you know, national unity. And it is key. Uh, it is not as if uh, other people, other you know, presidents have also, in a way, uh, complied, I mean, uh, wholesomely with uh, the provisions of the Federal Character Commission. 
But I think we have never seen this level of nepotism and sectionalism in the history of this country. And that is a very great threat to the unity of Nigeria. We all know that we, have, we are far away from June 12, 1993, when Abiola ran for the presidency of this country. And Nigerians from all walks of life, regardless of religious affiliation, geopolitical, you know, geopolitics, and the you know, ethnic uh, factors, all came together to vote for uh, Abiola. And, and I mean, and how many years down the line, and this is where we are, we have become so much suspicious of one another. So what you need is a president who, of course, we remember when during his inauguration in his first tenure, when he made that famous statement of, you know, I'm for everybody, I'm not for any. I mean, Nigerians embraced it because that was what they wanted. They wanted unity. They wanted a president that would bring them together. Unfortunately, this president has, rather than do that, he is the father of the Nigerian nation. He has right. given a different impression about where his leanings you know, lie. And I think that that is what uh, Kangua was talking about. And it is right and All appropriate. Right. Let, let's bring back uh, talk by, um, um, in on the conversation. Um, you talked about, you made reference to specifics. Um, I, I, wanted, I want you to talk on one. He made specific reference to the ousting of the former CJN on Nogue. His words, Omar's words was, he was hounded out of office in order for a Nottener to take uh, the position. We want some sort of clarity um, on this. Do you think that Onoge was handed um, out of office so that uh, someone else could replace him? Or there were real issues that needed to be addressed? Well, there were issues, but of course, my view, my personal view is that um, the issues were, were bloated out of, or, you know, proportion. And I think um, politically at that point in time, uh, they, they probably believed that Onogen had to go. Um, I, I don't think um, it was right to hound um, the Chief Justice, who is the uh, head of the third um, arm of government, perhaps number three person in the country, in the manner in which Onogen was taken out. Uh, so that, that's that. That's very, it's, it was clear that uh, they needed him to, to, to vacate for whatever reasons. And we had the allegation that he was um, in dalliance with the opposition party, PDP and co, as at that point in time. It was an unfortunate incident, but um, yes, that clearly was um, a case of hounding, uh, you know, out of office. I don't know if it was done so that to bring a, a, a northerner in, uh, perhaps maybe they needed someone that was a bit more friendly to, to, to their government, you know. But yes, that was a clear situation. But like I said earlier on, uh, still we have to be very careful about um, uh, allegations along tribal uh, and even religious lines. Okay. I would rather we, uh, we, and also issues of balance um, uh, towards uh, women and, and youth. All right, um, Atike, let, let me come back to you. This is not the first time this issue has been raised since the Buhari's administration. Um, what do you think is um, responsible for the silent reaction? There's been no real explanation or comment, either discountenancing the accusations that there is lopsidedness in the appointment or affirming the reasons, maybe for the sake of competence, like some persons are saying, are we going to say if there are competent people from a particular area, um, we shouldn't appoint them because they come from a particular part of the country? Yeah, that argument, I mean, this argument you just talked about, I think is right. It's, it's also important, reality, I mean, it's about merit, you know, over, you know, nepotism and uh, some of this, uh, you know, clannish interests and all that. That is, that is true. Um, again, uh, but we, we also see that uh, when it comes to certain uh, sections, I mean certain institutions of state, for instance, the military hierarchy, the military hierarchy does not, would seem not to also respect that. It's about the power structure of uh, the country. And uh, again, even that, that, that argument does not actually make sense because what you are saying is that, for instance, the entire defense, you know, uh, military infrastructure in the country is located about 95% of that in a country as diverse as this country in the north. So you are trying to give the impression, even if you have those in the education sector or in the NNPC and other you know, uh, corporations, are you trying to give the impression really that uh, you, you know, only people from a particular section of the country you know, are more knowledgeable and have more ability? I cannot accept, for instance, that Southern 
uh, you, you know, that those from the south are much more knowledgeable than those from the north. And I would also inversely not accept the same argument. You would always find. So it's about balancing, and that is the essence of that Federal Character Commission, that, okay. you know, recognizing the diversity of, of the country. You cannot afford to play a politics of exclusion. Inclusion is the key. Because you want everybody, you want to move everybody in the same direction. There must be a broad-based consensus on how the Nigerian state must be governed. And you need to get that consensus from all the component units of this country. That's the only way we can move Nigeria forward. Um, wrapping up, uh, Tokwe, let's get your final thoughts on this. What would be your takeaway, aside from the caution, what would be your takeaway from this open letter by Umar to the president at this time when the country across uh, the world as well is battling the pandemic of COVID-19. Sorry, can you Sorry I didn't get that. Yeah, okay, I, I, I'm talking about you, your quick thoughts in 30 seconds, if you can, um, on the uh, overall message, the relevance of Umar bringing up this issue at this particular time and the necessity for it, so to speak. It is, well, it is necessary. Finally, so long as it's well directed, uh, because now with the COVID-19 reality and uh, scarce resources, it's important to, of course, work on the issue of unity because except we are united and co cohesive in our approach, it's going to be tough uh, at times. All right. Thank you very much for joining us on the news.